Hello there. I'm Johnny Fox. I am the preacher at the Holiday Church of Christ. We're located in Middle Tennessee, right close to Tennessee Tech University, Cookville, Tennessee. We're about halfway between Nashville and Knoxville on Interstate 40. So wherever you are viewing our program tonight, our Bible study class, we sure do appreciate it. We're not able to have Bible study classes at Holiday Church of Christ. Due to the virus, of course, there is talk, hopefully, by maybe the end of August, starting back having Wednesday night Bible study. We'll have to see how the numbers, I guess, play out. But uh, we do have worship opportunities on the Lord's Day, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, or 6 p.m. at the Holiday Church of Christ in Cookville, Tennessee. You'd be as welcome as the sunshine and as welcome as the flowers in May, I tell you, we'd love for you to come and be with us any time that you might have opportunity. If we can be of help to you or your family, we want to do that. Uh, that's a part of our loving the Lord and serving the Lord that we manifest love for others. And Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this, and a man laid down his life for his friends. And Jesus laid down his life, and we ought to be willing to reach out and try to show our love and appreciation to others in their times of need. So do appreciate you viewing our Bible class for tonight. This is August the 10th that we are programming uh, this lesson for this evening. We try to sing a song or two and uh, some of you have been telling me uh, from the Holiday family that you've got your songbook and you follow right along and that just makes my day. But we'll sing a song or two together and have a word of prayer and then get into our study for the evening. What about one of my favorite songs, Mansions on the Hilltop, Mansions Over the Hilltop. And if you have a same book that we're using at Holiday, uh, let's see, it's called Church, Gospel, Songs, and Hymns. It's number 616, Mansions Over the Hilltop. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion. Just over the hilltop In that bright land Where we'll never grow old And someday yonder We will never more wander But walk the streets That are pure as gold Don't think me poor Or deserted or lonely I'm not discouraged, I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city. I want a mansion, a robe and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. In that bright land where we'll never grow And someday yonder we will never more wander But walk the streets at our purest goal Mansions over the hilltop, yeah, that's one of our favorites and has such a great message to it what about 523? That's what I've written down here. 523. We're going to be thinking about repentance, and this song has something to say about repentance. Tomorrow may be too late. 523 in our song book. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. There's danger and death and delaying. Accept God's saving grace. His life on the cross he has given. Oh, come while yet you may. 
He's earnestly pleading, oh, make no delay. Tomorrow may be too late. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. A home up in heaven is waiting. Oh, make the start today. Repent and confess and be baptized. There is no other way. Give Jesus your life and thus walk in his way. Tomorrow may be too late. Very, very true. Repent, confess, and be baptized. That's what the song suggested, and more important, that's what the good book teaches. One more. What about 557? 557, if you've got a songbook that we're using, the Lord has been mindful of me. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Though I through the valley of shadow, or mountain, or trouble sea, and often the darkness of trouble, the Lord has been mindful of me. The Lord has been mindful of me. He blesses and blesses again. My God is the God of the living. How excellent is his name. I'm rich, I am saved, I am happy. I've health and prosperity. I have friends with doors ever open. The Lord has been mindful of me. The Lord has been mindful of me. He blesses and blesses again. My God is the God of the living. How excellent is thy name. Amen. Well, would you bow with us for a word of prayer together? Dear Father, we want to thank Thee for another beautiful day and for all the many blessings that You bestowed upon us. We're certainly not worthy, but Your grace is amazing, and we thank You, Lord. Father, there's a great need throughout this world of ours for help in battling this coronavirus. Lord, we need Your healing hand, please. The things that go back to be what they once were, and especially in regard to spiritual things and worship and church going. Lord, please help us that that could be accomplished. And we do pray for those many that we know that are affected by the virus in the hospital or in their place and time of need for help. Lord, please be with them. And thank you for our families and our many gifts that we praise you for. Bless our effort tonight and may it accomplish good. And we pray and ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Sunday at holiday, I used a lesson about doing the things that are right in the eyes of God, making things right with God. And we're not going to give that sermon a repeat tonight, so don't get excited now. But... Uh, there was a verse that I made the comment about, 2 Chronicles 7 and chapter 7 and verse 14, that I said it was one of my favorite verses in the Bible. And it is truly that. And it has a great message within it, 2 Chronicles 7 14. But you know, what it brings out is several needs that man has. And one of them is in regard to repentance. And that is the great need and subject that I want us to think about tonight. The verse, 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Prayer was one of those 
requirements. And he said, you know, if you will seek my face, you'll turn from your evil way. I'll hear your prayers. I'll hear from heaven your prayers. And I'll forgive your sins and I'll heal your land. Now, I tell you, that is a powerful, powerful verse of scripture that I just get the goosebumps every time I study and think about the message contained within it because it is right down the line of what we need to do to be pleasing unto Almighty God and what He expects and has a right to expect from us as children. If we, it has everything in it. The right attitude is a humble spirit, a humble spirit, that we, we seek His face and we turn from our wicked ways, that we call upon Him in prayer. He's promised that He'll do His part and this is certainly our part and our responsibility. So I was just reflecting upon this verse in the sermon last Sunday about making things right with God. And I got to thinking about it today and I thought, you know, it brings up repentance. If we will turn, he said, from our wicked ways. That's what repentance is. Repentance is in the plan of salvation. We'll bring that out in just a moment before people can obey the gospel and become a New Testament Christian, they must repent. Repent or perish. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. He didn't just say, you need to be baptized for the remission of sins. First of all, Acts 8 and verse uh, Acts 2 and um, verse 38, he said, repent and be baptized. To the Christian who had gone, had erred and sinned, old Simon in Acts 8, he was sold as a Christian. Verse 13 of Acts 8 tells us he was a Christian. He'd obeyed the gospel. But in verse 22, Peter told him he needed to repent and to pray to God if perhaps the thoughts of his heart might be forgiven him because he was in the gall of bitterness and the bond of iniquity and he and his money were both going to perish because he thought that he could buy the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit to bestow upon others. Peter said, your heart's not right with God. And you must repent and be baptized. So repentance is essential in our relationship to God, whether we be what we call the alien sinner, someone who's never obeyed the gospel, it's right there, repentance, repentance, repent, or perish. But if we are a Christian and we've slid back into the world and done wrong, doing wrong, we must repent, turn around, go the other direction, because we're going in the wrong direction when we're living in sin and wrongdoing. Years ago, I heard a preacher give a definition of repentance. It's just like a military formation. You're going forward in a straight line, and then you are commanded to about face, and you're supposed to spin around and head in the opposite direction, unless you're going to pile, I guess, and get all confused. But that's a good definition of what repentance is. It's turning around, going in the right direction, because sin leads us in the wrong direction. So we want to think tonight in our Bible class about repentance, about repentance, because it is so important. If we will turn from our wicked ways, God will hear from heaven and heal our land and hear our prayers and answer them. Yes. Let's look at some other scriptures that likewise uh, are very important concerning this subject of repentance. Um, I thought about Ezekiel chapter 3 and first of all beginning in verse, oh uh, let's see, just get chapter 14 and verse 6 of Ezekiel 14 and 6. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from idols. Turn away your faces from your abominations. What? Repent, Israel. Turn about, he said, and turn yourselves away from idols. That's what repentance is, and that's what he commanded. Also, in Ezekiel, that was chapter 14, verse 6, but, <clears throat> excuse me, in chapter 18, beginning in verse 20, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. 
and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him that does wicked things. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. That's repentance. He's not living in wickedness and wrongdoing, but he's changed. Drop down in Ezekiel 18 to verse 27. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and he doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive, because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. There it is again. What repentance is essential, but what it brings about. And then verse 30 of Ezekiel 18, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Now here it is. Repent! And turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed. Make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves, and ye shall live with repeated emphasis the Ezekiel was given the message that God wanted us and them and us in that example to follow him to do right to turn from abomination to turn from sin that's the only way that we can please God and that's why he cried out in verse 30 repent and turn yourselves from your transgressions some people want to play with sin. They want to participate in sin and yet not know the condemnation of sin. It's there and we will be judged by our sins. Romans 3 and 23, for we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. First John 1, if we say that we have not sinned, we lie and we do not the truth, we deceive ourselves. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the message is very clear from Ezekiel 18. Repent and turn from your transgressions. That's what repentance is and it is required of us as well. In the New Testament, in Luke uh, chapter 13, we begin reading in verse 1. Luke 13 1. There were present at that season some that told Jesus of the Galileans whose blood Pilate, Pilate was Pontius Pilate, the governor, Roman governor, over all the land of Judea. Well, these folks were talking how that Pilate had mingled the blood of the people in an attack upon them by his soldiers with their sacrifices. He mingled their own blood with the sacrifices they were bringing to God. And everybody was talking about it here in Luke 13 and verse 1. Jesus captured that thought about what the people were saying. Oh, isn't this terrible? Isn't this awful? Uh, this, uh, you know, look what Pontius Pilate's done in taking lives and, and uh, persecuting people that, that were offering those offerings and with their own blood mingled with their sacrifices. But Jesus goes ahead with the thought in verse 2 of Luke 13. Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. Is that what you're inferring? Is that what you believe? That these were sinners above all the Galileans? He said, I tell you nay. No. But except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. You try to separate yourself from the sinfulness of these folks and their deeds as if you're better than them and yet you're doing sinful and wrong things that you need to repent of. Except you repent, ye shall perish. 
So instead of pointing the finger at others, we need to point the finger at ourselves and make sure our house is right with God, that our house is set in order before we condemn others. Now he gives another example of where death has occurred and some folks' lives are taken and everybody's talking about it. It was the news event of the time. Suppose those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all the men that dwelled in Jerusalem? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. A tower fell, and that tower fell and killed 18 people that were in the striking distance of the tower. And the talk of the people was, oh, these must have been wicked people that the old tower fell down upon them. You know, lightning struck them kind of attitude. And the Lord said, no, you know, you need to take care of looking at your own life. You suppose there are wicked sinners more than anybody else? I tell you, no, nay. But except ye repent, ye shall perish. He repeated verses 3 and 5 for double emphasis upon the truth that they needed to hear, receive, and obey. So repentance comes to have to deal with us in a very personal matter according to this teaching in Luke chapter 13 in regard to repentance. Let's go to Matthew 21. It's a good reference concerning our understanding of repentance. Matthew 21 and beginning in verse 28 from Jesus' own teaching. Matthew 21, 28. What think ye? Certain man had two sons. He came to the first son. He said, son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered, said, I will not. I will not. But afterward, he repented and he went. Changed his mind. I'm not going to go work in the vineyard day. Changed his mind. Came back and went to work. Changed his attitude. Came back and went to work. That's the first son. He came to the second son. He said, likewise unto him, go work today in my vineyard. And he said to the father, I go, sir. But he went not. Whether of them twain did the will of the father the two sons. First one said, I will not, but he went. Second one said, I will, but he didn't go. Jesus said, they said unto him, well, the first one, of course. He's the one that did the Father's will, got down to it. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when you had seen it, repented not afterward that you might believe him. The publicans and the harlots believed John's message and that he was from God and it was the truth that they needed to repent and receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of their life. And they were willing to do that. They first were saying no by the way they were living. They were living for sin and wrongdoing. But now... They've changed their attitude and they've repented and they want to serve, the, and they were serving the Lord, the publicans and the harlots. They had come to the kingdom now. But the self-righteous Pharisees and publicans who uh, said, oh yes, Lord, I'm one of yours, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do. But then they didn't do it. That's the era that they uh, certainly participated in and was wrong and the Lord condemned. We need to be those who search and study and meditate and make the right decision and the right commitment to the Lord who committed himself to the cross. That was from Matthew in another reference from Luke. It's the end of the Gospel of Luke that he describes for us from Jesus the importance of repentance in regard to what we call the Great Commission. Luke 24, beginning in verse 46. 
Jesus said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. What was to be preached in Jerusalem? Repentance and remission of sins. They go hand in hand. Repentance shows the different attitude. Repentance shows the different thinking and the change of heart demonstrated in one's life by the change of the way we live. So repentance is essential in us receiving the remission of our sins. We can't live in sin and please God. We can't live in sin and be a faithful child of God. We must turn away from it. Are we going to be sinless? No. But every day we beg the Lord for his mercy and grace and forgiveness and pray for the strength to not commit these sins again so that we can be forgiven. As Luke 24 shared with us that great text. We referred to Acts 2 and verse 38 when the people were pricked in their hearts when they realized they crucified and killed the Son of God. Peter told them when they said, what shall we do? What can we do? They needed to repent and be baptized for the remission of their sins. That's what we need to do in order to become a Christian. They were not Christians. They, about 3,000 of them, responded that day of Pentecost and confessed their faith and repented of their sins and they were baptized. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Also, in Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance is essential in our being converted. Acts 3 and verse 19. We referred earlier to Simon the sorcerer being told in Acts 8, and verse 22 by Simon Peter that he needed to repent and pray to God and perhaps the thoughts of his heart may be forgiven. Some important verses about repentance. Let's share one more and it's from Revelation and it begins in chapter 2 and verse 12 our reading concerning the need of repentance to the congregation that this letter was written to. Revelation chapter 2 and beginning in verse 12. And the angel of the church in Pergamos wrote, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou beholdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days of Antipas was a faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold to the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit fornication. So then thou also hast them that hold the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Now here's our verse. Repent, verse 16 of Revelation 2. Pergamos, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Repent, or else I will come quickly. That's the message of the need for that congregation that was allowing false doctrine and false teaching to continue that must be stopped. That is one of the works of faithful elders that they stop those who spread false teaching and destructive doctrines to the family of God, the church. They make sure the family is, the flock is fed and the flock is protected from the wolves of false teaching. Well, we've surveyed tonight several important verses concerning repentance, and I hope it's been a blessing to you. We started out with 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, to turn and to pray to God. We looked 
for scriptures from Ezekiel 18, Matthew 21, Acts 2, Acts 8, and Acts 3. Other references in Luke 24, Luke chapter 13. These scriptures were used to try to help us to see the need of repentance when we've done wrong. If we've never obeyed the gospel, it's a part of the plan of salvation along with faith and along with baptism. If we have obeyed the gospel and we've gone back to the world, we need, like Simon the sorcerer, to repent and pray to God and perhaps the thoughts of our heart may be forgiven. I'm Johnny Fox. I preach for the Holiday Church of Christ in Cookville, Tennessee. I want to thank you for being a part of our Bible class here tonight on August the 10th, and I pray that our study has made us think about the need and the subject of repentance from God's Holy Word. May God bless and help us all, especially during these days of battling this invisible enemy, the virus. May God give healing and help to us all, please. Thank you for listening, and good evening.